It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Panthers and the Vikings next on EA Sports. U.S. Bank Stadium holds just under 70,000 spectators, and they've come out in full force for this one. A fantastic atmosphere here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago, when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Carolina Panthers. Ready to go on the long side by broadcast partner Charles Davis. And CD, our quarterbacks, taking center stage here for each of their respective offenses. And I think that each quarterback wants to play this game with a faster tempo. They want to get the plays in quickly, get in and out of the huddle quickly, take just a few seconds in the line of scrimmage and survey the defense, and then attack. And I think that we'll see both offenses try to do that in this one. Six foot three. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you, balance, because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it. It gives you easier passing lanes and easier coverages to read. And they said balance will be a focus in this one. Yeah, they don't want it all just heaped on his shoulders, I don't believe. I think they want to make sure they take some of the pressure off. Now the first carry for Adrian Peterson. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. How best to describe that one? That's a great down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. He'll be tackled shy of the 35. The power move there couldn't buy him much space. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defense in front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. And defensively, going with a dime set, six DBs on third and four. He'll look to throw. Man open, it's Moss complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And let's face it, what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. If you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the 
end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility. So good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, right. exactly right. What's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact and he'll go deep. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here's second and eight. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Moss. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. Matt Rule, not a big fan of that last call, and he's going to go ahead and challenge it. The previous play is under review. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide, and i, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things, but even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw here. That's complete to Moss out of the backfield. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. On second down now, it's Peterson, and he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. You were telling me this yesterday. It's exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back, and establish the run early. Now Peterson. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. All right, Brad, I know where they're only going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Second and five. And complete. Right side, the tight end Rudolph. And the Vikings are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate. Got the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage. But now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's going to throw the football, it has to be pinpoint here. I was, I was going to ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just want to see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They try again with Peterson. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Adrian Peterson. Five-yard touchdown run. And the Vikings take the ball down the field and score on their opening run.
kicked off by a touchdown run by Adrian Peterson. Smith to return it. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down, shy him to 20. So here are the Panthers under head coach Matt Rule. And we get a glance here at their leader, the man who will be calling the plays under center. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, He's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him <laughs> along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But that's what good leadership gives you. You know, at the end of the season, because you've done a great job, QB, he's usually the guy that springs for the good stuff. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. They've got it with a second and ten. They'll set up to throw. He finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space, kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. A good gain on first. Has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. They'll try the right side here with Davis. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of people are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. A pair of first downs gives them a first and 10 up at the 44. Here's Davis now. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Here's a second and seven. Underneath, he's got Olsen, and he'll take this from 147-yard line to the other. A gain of six. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he was unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Off 
defensively lucky there, able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. Here's the Panthers punter now as he's on to kick it away. It's a 42-yard punt. They gave him to just a yard on the return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. Adrian Peterson now getting ready to go again on offense. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, He's really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They start the drive with Peterson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. A tenth carry now for Peterson. And he'll power his way up near the 25. 48 yards rushing for him now to this point. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop his shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And he will have the Vikings first down and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. to throw now on first down. He'll get that one to Carter complete. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Barney sold the goal route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. Now a quick slant as the throw is complete. A gain of six there on first. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Second down at four. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Here's Moss with a catch out of the backfield. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's complete to his running back, Carter. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Three yards remain for second down. They'll look to throw again. 
Got his man complete over the middle. That's Carter. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers 26. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out and ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. Maybe we're too old to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. Here's Smith to return it. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. snap this once and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently, we're going to get right back to it. First, though, time for a check of the next-gen stats from that first half for Carolina. And the rushing numbers should tell the story of why they trail at the half. They're still in single digits in yardage as a team through two quarters of play. That's not good. going to get the football first trailing here as well as we resume play in this second half and Smith chooses not to return it and they'll bring it out to the 25 out come the Panthers they'll have it first on offense in the third quarter and right out of the gate they face what you think could be a pretty important drive I would say so you know they're down two scores that's not the end of the world it wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start calling back, they've got to start putting more pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Eluding the pressure right. He'll have a first down past the 40, and he'll take it to the 43-yard line. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now a handoff to Davis, and he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. 
On play action, they'll throw. He finds Smith out of the backfield. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 35. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They looked like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that they were going to make trash cans that got kicked over, that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Here's Davis running right. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Evades him at the 10, and he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Scampering home from 19 yards out, and the Panthers have got it back to a one-score game. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line, because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is down to a field goal. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no further. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise, that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Peterson as they begin on the ground. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's second and nine. Looking to throw. That winds up pushing him back You'll 11 yards on the sack. Bring it third. Let's go and detail this situation here. Third ball coming up. Back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. Maybe just run, run up the middle? Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You gotta try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. 
And indeed, that's what they'll do as they run it here. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. So they went a little cautious there on third and long. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Remember, they're playing with a lead right now. So getting a first down, yes, that would be great. But even more importantly, take care of the football. No turnovers, no big plays for the other team. And keep the clock moving. The Vikings send out their punter. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. set to take the field and here we are almost through three quarters of play and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm put it mildly because they're not even over 100 yards yet and in today's nfl where it's a pass first league that is quite surprising not many teams patient enough to stick with the run everybody wants to advance the ball through the air they've got to get their timing back so good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 just shy of midfield at the 49 They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big play that time through the air. 35 yards. And you need a big play? Go to your big play guy. Listen, that's football 101. When you have to have it, you expect that guy to step up. A lot of people call these receivers divas. Sometimes just leadership when they get in the huddle and say, get me the ball, I'm about to make a big play. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. They'll drop the throw. And his throw is incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game, second and ten. They'll look to throw here. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry. Plenty of shouts from this crowd as they watch the replay. They want a challenge, and they're going to get one. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I, I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Uh, here's the call. After review of the play, Decision to challenge does not pan out, and that's also going to cost him a timeout. I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Back to throw again. This is caught. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Sports. And we return welcoming you 
back to Minneapolis. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Second and goal from the one. Davis again. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think the second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And Davis, he's not going to get there. Not able to make it to the yellow line. They stop him short. That'll make it four down after a loss of the Interesting decision here because I think you've got to kick it and tie this game. If it's the second quarter, maybe then you go for it. But here in the fourth, you can't come away with nothing. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And his kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. And we essentially have a brand-new ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. down here's a run with Peterson and he can only manage to get a couple second and eight coming up well, sometimes as a running back you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not what you expect it to be but in this case there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv and you run into a tough crowd now back to throw that's complete to Justin Jefferson. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter. You and I both know in the NFL. That's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. 57 to mark. 57 to mark. They give it to Peterson. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. And by the fourth quarter, 
you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. They run again on first down, Peterson. And a short gain down to about the 33. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. He'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Carter. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. That's a gain of seven. Makes it third and two. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. Peterson. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. Second down and eight. Another tote for the workhorse here this afternoon, Peterson. The Panthers are going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought Come down on, inside the five at the four. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're to. <laughs> without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. 59 mark, 59 mark. Check, check, 59. They'll run for it with Peterson. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Partner, you get about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. This Carolina defense looking to keep them out of the end zone once more. Third and goal. Trying the power game with Ham. And he gets halfway there down to the one yard line. Only a yard there, so it brings up fourth and goal. Came up about a yard short, but I can't help it, Brandon. I love it when the big guy gets the football and he tries to babble his way forward. There's something about those guys carrying the ball and watching people trying to stop him. That's just great theater.
So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. He made his only attempt earlier. This for the win. And his kick is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And you look back over the score sheet. Interesting. A very clean game. No turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offenses spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn.